think you've probably heard by now that the real estate market here in Cincinnati is white hot. Sellers are getting top dollar for their houses and buyers are really struggling to find a home that they can move into and to win uh, because they're in a multiple offer situation so often. Um, so we're going to take a look here uh, this week at what the market has looked like by the numbers in the last week and we're going to compare that to the same week last year to see where things are trending and uh, give you some tips here on what you might be able to do to succeed as a buyer and a seller in this market. Uh, so first off, new listings are up about 3% compared to the same week last year. Not a huge increase, but any new inventory is certainly welcome because inventory has been so low this year, historically low, and competition uh, from other buyers has been so high. Um, certainly getting a little bit more choice and more time for buyers is definitely welcome. Um, and not a concern for sellers because we're still so very much leveraged towards sellers in the market. They have the negotiation strength right now. Uh, again, they're getting multiple offers. They're getting well over list price in most cases if they're marketing their homes correctly. Um, so not a big deal that new listings went up a little bit. I think that gives everybody maybe a little bit more time if that continues, if that trend continues and we, we see more inventory on the market. Um, closings are up about 6% compared to the same week last year. So a little bit more activity compared to last year. If you recall from last year, uh, late April, we had already been in lockdown for a few weeks. Um, people were uh, drastically um, removing themselves from the market, especially sellers early uh, on with the lockdowns. So we started to see that kind of taper off a little bit as people started to be more comfortable getting back into the market. Um, but we are seeing a little bit of an uptick in activity overall. I expect to see that trend continue. Closings tend to lag about 60 days behind new listings numbers. So we'll keep an eye on that to see how the market's affected and what you can do. Um, the average sale price is up an astronomical number uh, this past week compared to the same week last year. It's 26% increase. Um, we have seen 8 to 10 or 12%, maybe even 15 some weeks. We've never seen anything like this. A 26% increase again this past week in average sale price compared to the same week last year. Now, I don't expect that to happen again. I don't expect that to continue. There may be an outlier here or there that's a similar number. Um, it's not gonna be a 26% increase every week and on average for the year, of course. But for sellers, it's awesome news. Your house is worth more now than it um, ever has been. Um, and it's certainly worth you know quite a bit more than it was even last year. So. Great news for homeowners who were thinking about selling last year but didn't want to because of COVID. Now we've got quite a bit more uh, incentive here, uh, financial incentive with your home value being so high to go ahead and make a move if you've been considering that. Uh, average days on market, so the time that you it's gonna take you to sell, on average, it's 15 days. That has not changed since last week. Uh, compared to last year, that's down 35%. Um, but a better measure of how long you're gonna be on the market is actually the median days on market. So right in the middle of the market. And that number is two days. So what that means is um, half of the listings are selling, um, taking longer rather than two days to sell and half of them are selling actually faster than two days. So uh, if a listing sells, it gets under contract the first day, it's actually zero in the MLS. If it happens the next day, it's one. Um, so in the first couple days, listings are selling. And certainly if you've been in the market, you've experienced that. Uh, that's no surprise there. Um, we expect that trend to continue as demand's really high and supply is still relatively low. Um, speaking of supply, we're at 2.8 months here of inventory. Um, that is actually a whole month above what we were at at the beginning of the year in January. So although we've seen a whole month of increase in inventory, we're actually experiencing um, the market swinging more in favor of sellers. So if you're uh, familiar with the laws of supply and demand, Obviously, if supply goes up, um, then that would make more sense that maybe the market has shifted in favor of buyers, but demand has actually shifted up so much more and it's not really reflected in the data here through the MLS. There's not a very good resource to, to uh, compile all of the buyers that are looking uh, and all the pre-approved buyers and all the offers that are coming in and things like that. We have data on what these listings sold for and what they're on the market for and what they've gone pending at. We don't have a lot of data, or at least not sufficient data, on the number of buyers that are looking, um, that are interested. Um, perhaps we could dig into some of that through some of the portals like Zillow or Realtor.com, but to get local information on the number of buyers is difficult. We just rely on um, our 
our experience here as agents and as consumers in the market, uh, if you're buying or shopping for a home right now, uh, trying to buy, you certainly have experienced that there's many showings, there's many offers. Um, if it's marketed well, it's priced right, it's probably going to sell right away in multiple offers and you're probably going to have to beg for the house if you really want it. Um, so although inventory has increased, demand has actually increased uh, exponentially beyond that and so we're experiencing even more so a seller's market right now. It's white hot for sellers. Um, so now is the time if you've considered selling your home, making a move, um, your house may not be worth this much ever again. Um, of course, nobody really knows exactly what's going to happen with the market. I certainly think that the market conditions are such that we will continue to be in a seller's market for a while, but we don't really know. Um, and so it all kind of depends on the economy, um, not just nationally, but locally, and uh, a variety of other factors. What's going to happen? And if you're considering a move, it might be the best time for you to go ahead and take advantage of the market and sell high. Okay, we all know when we're investing, we try to buy low and sell high. If you'd like to sell high, go ahead and click on the link there, patrickgrosser.com slash sell. There's nothing being sold there. I'm not going to ask for your contact information. It's just a video that I produced with Greg from my marketing department to walk you through exactly how we help our clients to sell for top dollar. We do more marketing than what a traditional agent does um, to make sure that we're not only getting the, your listing out to the most number of buyers possible, but also the correct types of buyers, those that would be most interested in the features of your home because the features of your home actually match their characteristics, their needs, the things that they would be looking for. And we know that based on several data points, and you can go through that in the video. Uh, again, it's just an educational um, overview of how this process works, so if you're curious about it, go ahead and take a look at that. Now, if you'd like to learn more about how to buy low, certainly that's the biggest challenge right now. Um, is to try to find a house and then if you find one, how do you win in multiple offers? And if you do, of course you're gonna be bidding up over the other people and there's no way you're gonna buy low. What we wanna do as an alternative to the open market, doesn't mean you have to avoid the open market completely, but in addition to that, let's take a look at off-market homes. What homes are unlisted that we might be able to buy? Maybe there's some homeowners who'd be willing to sell if they got the right price and they could work out the timing. Um, and they don't have to go through the hassle of the traditional listing process, maybe they'll be fine with just go ahead and, and sell to somebody who's ready to go right now and do just one showing with one buyer. Um, so that's something that I'm advertising for my buyer clients. I, it's a time consuming and expensive process, so I can't do it for everybody. Uh, but the more specific my clients are with their criteria, especially their location, even a specific neighborhood, I'm able to send out postcard mailings, I'm able to do Facebook ads directly into those homeowners news feeds because I can get a list of the homeowners at these certain price points with a certain number of beds and baths in a certain neighborhood, and we can get them to raise their hand about, you know, maybe they'd be willing to sell. The way we do that is just tell them the truth that I have a buyer here or this couple here that wants to buy in your neighborhood, and here's what they're looking for. Here's what they're pre-approved for. They're willing to pay you a fair market value. We'll even pay for an appraisal at closing if we need to. Um, so you're comfortable with the sale price. But what we're willing to do is pay you fair market value for your home. You don't have to get it ready for showings. You don't have to do a bunch of repairs. You don't have to do professional photography. Just show us the house. If we like it, we'll write a full price offer and we'll close at a time that's convenient for you. Um, so that's a very attractive offer for homeowners who aren't on the market yet. And so we are getting folks to raise their hand and say, you know, maybe we can make this work. So um, it's a kind of an old fashioned approach, but you know, when things are really tough, uh, competing with other buyers on the market, this is a really good strategy you can use to buy low, to buy at market value, not pay a premium by competing with other buyers and multiple offers. Um, so you can buy low and then you can sell high and you can take advantage of the open market when you're selling, but we want to try to avoid the open market when you're buying. That way you can get the spread you need to make the move that you're going to have here of buying and selling a profitable one. Maybe you can pay off some debts, maybe you can save for retirement, maybe you can go on vacation that you've been wanting to go on you haven't been able to afford. Whatever you want to do with that cash, there's a bunch of cash um, in your home equity right now in most cases. And the challenge for most homeowners is how do I tap into that because I know I can sell. Um, but I don't know if I can buy a house. I don't know if I can find my next one without paying too much for it. So then it ends up, if you if you sell without doing target marketing, without getting every penny out of it, you just put it up there like most folks do, 
um, and just hope that showings and offers come in, you'll probably sell because the market's hot. You won't get top dollars, so you'll get around here. And then when you buy, you're gonna have to bid uh, over the other buyers and you're gonna be uh, paying a premium. So you don't really have much of a spread there. Uh, of course, you get to move into a, a home that's better fit for you, which is great, but you're not gonna get the, the financial benefit of buying low and selling high. So if you'd like more information on how to buy low, go ahead and click on the link patrickgrosser.com slash unlisted. Um, again, that's an educational video. There's nothing being sold there. We're not looking for your contact information. We're just educating you on the process that we go through that I just explained in more detail how it works. Um, and if you have any questions about buying or selling, you'd like to have a conversation, 15 minutes or less, no obligation, no cost, go ahead and click the link calendly.com slash patrickgrosser slash call and we'll get that on the schedule. We'll have a conversation about the type of home you're looking for, a little bit about your house, and try to calculate, crunch the numbers on both ends, um, what your spread could be if you decided to make a move. So to see if it's really even worth the trouble of you doing that, I think that at the very least you'll find out, even if it's not a good time for you to do it, at least you'll know and you'll have, you know, you'll make a decision from an informed perspective about whether or not making a move this year makes any sense for you. Okay, so if you're interested in more information on selling, on buying, or just want to have a conversation in general about the whole thing, you've got the links there. Um, and if you like this information, go ahead and click the like button on this post. That'll help uh, make sure that you see some of this information in the future. I do these videos twice a week uh, on market news and on buyer and seller tips. You can also comment if you'd like to uh, introduce any topics to me that you'd like me to cover in the future. I'm certainly open to doing that. And you can also, don't forget to uh, follow my business page on Facebook and turn on notifications so you don't miss anything. And also, if you want to try to watch a bunch of these videos all together, um, there's a bunch of different playlists I have here on my YouTube channel. That's Patrick Grosser dash Cincinnati Realtor. You can also find those playlists on my Facebook page too. But depending on which platform you like, Facebook or YouTube, there's a couple different options there for you. And I hope this information has been helpful to you guys as always. Again, if you have any questions or you want to learn more, you've got the links there. Otherwise, I will see you next time.